Ladies and gentlemen, here we will go with game number one between Inca and Strelik. Both of these players are going to be meeting up on NASL Metalopolis for their first map. And Orb, I am so thrilled about this match. Yeah, man. Strelik versus Inca. PVT on NASL Metalopolis, of course. Can only be on cross positions. So we will have a pretty good opportunity for a macro game here. What really excites me about these two players going down right now is Inca... You know, we saw him play against Select, and he was very strong in the NASL. But Strelik, he's a type of person that just prepares for everything. And he practices so much against whatever his opponent does. And I feel like Strelik's going to go into this and going to be able to cut a lot of quarters in order to get him that small little advantage in the beginning stage. Hopefully he can extrapolate that outwards. It's definitely possible. On the other hand, of course, Inca, definitely a huge user of Warp Prism. So that's something yeah. that Strelik's going to have to be very careful about. And of course, it's not something where you can just kind of uh, cut corners against Warp Prisms. You have to either just have your army like in position waiting for any type of drop, and you can't be aggressive, or you need to have turrets there uh, you know, to completely block it from getting in, or a Viking patrolling around. Uh, so he is going to have to be aware of that. He shouldn't realize since Inca does use uh, those war prisms very, very often. Well, we do have Strelok over here in the 3 o'clock position as the blue Terran. In the 9 o'clock position, we have the red Protoss, QXG Inca. And yes, you did say there was cross positions. And I like cross positions for the most part on Metalopolis. You can get that 3 base very easily. But as you get to, as you go on later, you actually start to expand closer to your opponent. Now, the big thing is I would normally say Terran has the advantage in that stage because they're the ones that normally are dropping. But as you said before, Inca with his Warp Prisms, it really evens things out, gives him that mobility that he really needs going into that mid game, that end game. And I feel like this is going to be a great, great series. Yeah, you know, if we ever uh, happen to magically get to the super late end game where uh, both players are trying to take these golds and then somehow all the other bases are getting like mined out, um, that will actually give a situation where Strelok can uh, defend very nicely with siege tanks in that position and try to deny the expansion from Inca. Um, but as you said, War Prisms can uh, really help deal with that just because uh, it forces the Terran to uh, leave some of their units at home or just you know really be on their toes and be unable to just be fully aggressive because they'll uh, risk those counterattacks. We do see a pretty standard play coming out from both of these players so far. The big thing to note is that there is a gas from Strelok Mostly all of Protoss build orders are the same at this point in time. Yep. But Terran has started to mine that gas. And particularly mining over that 25 or 50 level where you can put an add on either a tech lab mm -hmm. or yeah. a reactor. So he's going to go a factory to start out with that. Absolutely. And the most likely situation uh, will be something like a 1-1-1. One, one, one. Although, of course, we've also seen some other styles with uh, fast siege tanks uh, or you know fast banshees. If he does get a second gas after he throws on that factory, it's possible to go for something like cloak banshees. Uh, but he might be going for something like a 1-1-1 right now, and that's essentially uh, for Inca. He's going to have to uh, react accordingly. Something like a you know a three gate expo would not be very effective against 1-1-1. Uh, you're essentially going to need that earlier robotics facility so you can get those immortals out and of course get the observer out to see what's coming. But oh, look at that! No. This is, uh, he's actually going to go ahead and add on a tech lab to his barracks and uh, start bringing marauders, but he also added on a second gas, Andre. So what do you think he might be well, doing? Well, he is getting the factory, but it's proxied all the way down in the oh, okay, 7 o'clock position. This is just so to confused. scout out. He's going to go over here, land it, and also make a Hellion. Now, this Hellion, uh, he, you know, White Raw and Strelok, well, actually, White Raw, when he was staying with me, he told me to do this every single time. He says this is the best thing that Terran can possibly do. And I was like, oh, very interesting. I don't know if I completely agree with it, but I, I would assume that that scene really likes that. What he does is go over here. Even if he's spotted out, he can get a Hellion out, and there's no way that Inca will have enough DPS to kill the Hellion before it gets to see everything in the Protoss base. So that's the big thing, and he will be able to land that, get that Hellion, and he's going to be absolutely great in terms of scouting. You know, that's true, uh, of course. Uh, you know, Strelik, having gone for this, though, the problem is he did reveal the fact that there's a factory uh, listed over into his opponent's base, so that could let in uh, Inca know that it's possible. He's going for a starport, and there we do, in fact, see him getting a starport on that tech lab, so he will be going for some Banshees here. Here come uh, two Marines and a Marauder, though, right up into the main. This uh, one Stalker is actually... Oh, no, it's on target fire in the factory. The Hellion runs right by. Now they're going into the mineral line. Uh, he might get a couple probe kills here. No, looks like he's just going to fall back. Strelik does pick off the probe on the ramp, uh, but Inca's in a little bit of trouble right now. 
Yeah, he is. He needs to micro this perfectly. He doesn't want to lose anything at all. I think he has already lost something. Now starting to engage. And these martyrs are just too much as it is. Oh my gosh. It looks like additional Hellions are being war or additional Hellions are being rallied in here. And there's the big warpin that he really needs. Is it gonna be enough though? There are two marauders over here. Yeah, I think it will finally be enough now that he has these two zealots to tank with the stalker in the back. But nice amount of damage there from Strelok. Uh, he did kill four workers during that, so that did give him a nice little advantage. 27 harvesters to 21. Right now he's continuing to kite these zealots. Uh, so he's actually uh, doing pretty well to actually kill these off. So uh, Inca having sent back that stalker to go deal with any possible Hellion uh, did, you know, just allow his zealots to die. So a little bit of a, uh, maybe a misstep, but uh, of course you do have to defend against those Hellions. Don't want to take any damage in your line. But look at this. Cloak is on the way from Strelok, and you know what? We still don't have a Robo on the way from Inca. Yeah, the constant harass is so annoying to deal with. With Inca being all the way up at four gateways, it's going to be difficult to actually transition into something like a Robo or a Forge. He needs one of them. As soon as this Cloak Banshee gets in here and Inca has nothing to deal with it, he will be in a lot of trouble. There, the robotic facility goes down. But it's still a long ways, and Cloak is about to finish just about 25 seconds away. This could be absolutely disastrous for Inca right now. Uh, unfortunately, I feel like, you know, when he saw that factory, he should have realized, okay, he sent a factory over, and he's not building... Well, I mean, he was building Hellions out of the factory, but he's not building anything uh, crazy out of the factory. He's not actually starting to make tanks, so therefore, you know, why would he have made the factory unless he's actually, you know, doing something else out of it, like a star uh, starport, so... Uh, it's unfortunate he's not realizing this, but here comes the Cloak Banshee into the natural. His entire army's out of position over, uh, perhaps to go for a counterattack on Strelok's base, but they're actually just kind of sitting there at the Zimalaga Tower. Is he going to bring him back? No. Uh, he's actually just going to go towards Strelok's base, but Strelok has another Banshee there taking out those sentries. That is so bad for Inca. Looks like the robotics facility will be finishing now, and uh, he's going to need to chrono out an observer. There it is, but I don't know if it'll be in time. He's losing so many probes. Yeah, I don't think he can counterattack, of course. Losing three sentries in this entire kerfuffle over here with that one banshee it looks like the observer will finally pop out inca is still mining it's kind of bad that strelok's allowing this to happen finally yeah it looks like cloak will even just dissipate completely because he ran out of energy finally stalker's getting over here he might be able to take this out but i'm not sure the banshee is moving pretty fast and all the way over to that endless abyss where stalkers can't continue engaging yeah, stalkers do not have wings. They can't fly. Uh, they can just blink from place to place. So I'm not going to be able to actually catch up. Although that Banshee just walked uh, right over them, actually. Literally just went straight over them. But uh, I guess they were on move command. Uh, but uh, where is that second Banshee, Andre? I'm looking around for it. It's right in the middle. Ah, uh, there it is, indeed. Uh, it has no energy, so it cannot wait, the first attack one, right? any further. Oh, okay. Th they're back at home. He's got two oh, wow, Banshees two. back <laughs> at his natural. Uh, yeah, three total right now, and he's got his, uh, his expansion up and running. So, I mean, right now it's 34 SCVs to 30 probes, uh, and Estrelic, of course, also has double mules. So he's in a pretty darn good position right now, uh, and he also has some pretty good tech, whereas Inca, of course, with that later robotics facility, I mean, he still doesn't have a Twilight Council or any uh, Colossus tech, anything of that sort. Uh, he's really just relying on gateway units right now, and, of course, the, he has the possibility of making immortals. Uh, but he could be in a lot of trouble when Estrelic comes out with some type of two-base timing attack. Yeah, I got to believe in this position that Strelik is way ahead. It's kind of interesting that he didn't go for that Raven. I thought he was going to go for a Raven just because the Starport was already on the tech lab. You might as well get it. It's such a great unit, especially in conjunction with this mass Banshee style. But nevertheless, he's just going to continue onwards to the regular army composition of mass barracks units and getting his medevacs out. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, you know, what what the Banshees do is it forces the Protoss player to get those Stalkers, and then the Raven can just completely counter the Stalkers since Point Defense Drone will not allow them to do any damage. Uh, and But you know what? Here's the timing attack, man. He's going to move forward. He's got three Banshees, two Medivacs, quite a bit of infantry. Um, I mean, Inca's been doing a good job macroing back up. I see six Zealoths at the natural, and it looks like he has seven Stalkers total. Uh, three that he was leaving the main, but he only has one sentry, so this could be very, very difficult to hold off uh, without any crucial force fields. The Banshees are pulling away some of these units. It looks like one of these Banshees is going to go down. This is kind of... Yeah, interesting play by Strelok. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, losing a second one. That is terrible, but here comes the engagement. One force field goes off. He doesn't have enough uh, to get another one because he has the Guardian shield up. Uh, looks like the Stalkers are just target firing on the, uh, the Medivac. No, they do not. They actually are just... Moving right now, the Zelts are trying to attack, but they're being kited so well by Strelok's micro, and it looks like Strelok has the advantage in this engagement. Yep, and with the Medivacs, he can keep doing this. Stim just keeps going up. There's the other next Stim that goes down. 
and it looks like these zealots are no match just bearing down on this opponent going all the way up into the main there's no way to stop this the natural is actually very exposed the probes are just mining over there inca is behind almost half the supply of strelok and now again he tries to engage right here but the power of those medevacs in conjunction with those marine marauder stim is too much. Yeah, the medevacs are now out of energy, and here come the probes. I don't think it'll be enough with only one stalker in the back for DPS. That is just not enough. There are simply too many units here from Strelok. Looks like Inka got caught off guard, and he leaves the game. Game one going to Strelok. <laughs>we can already see some tension going in the air right now Inca kind of angry with that last game and uh, you know what I, I don't blame him uh, to an extent I mean that early game harass was way way too strong I felt he lost a lot of stalkers a lot of lost a lot of uh, just mining time things like that and then that follow-up the combination of going directly into the Banshees just obliterated him to yeah. the point where Shrella could have done anything he pushes and he wins Absolutely. Uh, I think it all came down to uh, just the reads from Inca. He really should have realized. I mean, it's kind of like when you see a barrack or a factory floating somewhere. Anytime you see a factory floating somewhere in the early game from a Terran player, uh, they clearly invested in a factory and they're not actually using it for something. Yeah, he, he built Hellions in his base, but that's like a minor, uh, it's, it's nowhere near as major as, you know, the investment in the factory with 100 gas and everything. Yeah. So it's very clear that he got that factory for a reason the reason would be to get that starport i mean that's just kind of like the the basic logic uh of yeah. that kind of a situation so I mean he should have seen that coming but unfortunately didn't get that robot I there's like two main ways that you can go for after seeing a factory there's of course the uh the starport way or the barracks way now going the barracks way is kind of weird because you're only using a very expensive uh unit which is the factory 150 minerals 100 gas to actually scout it's kind of weird to d do that uh rather it's no more normal to get that starport, but I think what Inka was saying was, hey, you, you have marauders in this army and concussive shell. You probably didn't go starport tech, so I'm going to just disregard that, get the, my tech a little bit later to obviously defend four banshees. We know <laughs> after that game that that was the wrong read, and ultimately Strelik was able to take the game. But I understand his read. It's absolutely fine. Uh, you know, equity's sake, I think it would have been still best if he kept doing that over and over again if he wants to play not consistent but um i don't know how to say this like in poker if it your 60 percent win rate it's still the correct decision are you saying are you saying that you think most of the time that situation the Terran would not be going star correct well banshee tech so hard if you don't see well because i feel like the majority it's, it's of the time to you're say. gonna see banshee when you see that build i don't know i could be wrong man to an, to an extent to an extent like i've seen raven play a lot coming from that just raven and the cloakless yeah. banshee oh that no yeah that's for I think, sure yeah i think that's what you might be thinking still great to get that robo man. correct correct that's why it's i mean it the thing be. is like yeah it might they might not be going banshee but even if they don't go banshee it's still just an always a fantastic idea to get that robo not just for the scouting information for those observers but also immortals are crazy good now uh, with six range mm, they're actually extremely useful so uh i feel like it just would have been a better idea than going to the four gate that's true. All right, let's go ahead and get into game number two and see what these players have in store for us. More action coming your way after this break, guys.